Some of you might know that in addition to the event rental business, I grow garlic on the side. Basically because of the popularity of the garlic video that I posted, which was really just a short blurb, I uh, took a tour of another local garlic grower here that's doing it also kind of as a side gig. And, uh, and uh, yeah, take a look. So we're checking out Nick's garlic plot here. Um, he's organically growing this. This is uh, Nick's plot over here. Just wanted to show you guys and we're going to be talking to Nick in a second. Just a quick interjection here. I wanted to apologize um, in advance. Um, there's a lot of wind noise and that's something I really need to improve in the future. Maybe get some sort of wind sock for my camera setup. But first of all, how much garlic is there? So we put in 6,300 bulbs in the spring. Or in, uh, yeah, or sorry, in the fall. Okay. And that ends up being, uh, I think I have about 24,000 heads here when it's finished. And I made sure when we were planting, we had about five or six people helping. And all of us came out with an apron on, and we only brought the box out of that strain. Okay, and once right, the box right, had ran right, out, then we went right. and moved on to the next strain. So I'm pretty sure we got it okay. fairly decent. Yeah, well, it looks much more organized than mine. Uh, and are you running? Well, clearly there's lines here. So, yeah, so yeah. honestly, the, the whole reason I decided to do that was I started looking up uh, best ways to prevent weeds without having to like come out with a tine weeder on a tractor every every couple days. And I found this company in the States called Garden Mats. And they actually produce uh, landscape fabric with holes in it pre manufactured. Oh, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. But to buy all the landscape fabric for this whole project was like $700. Right. And to buy the mats with the holes in it was about $4,500. Oh, okay. That's so, expensive. So it's like 4000 4, just in labor, right? Uh, so I ended up making up like a little die to punch the holes and layered all the mats over. And me and my buddy spent like two days just pressing through all the all the mats to burn the holes in it ourselves. So I only actually spent about $700 on, all the, on the mat. And honestly, like so far, it hasn't done as good of a job as stopping weeds as I thought it would. But what it did do is it sprung the garlic out of the ground way earlier because the ground got so hot so fast. So my friend has a farm just uh, five, five kilometers this way, actually. And his family plants garlic every year. And by the time our plants were about a foot tall, they had about three inches out of the ground. And their soil's way better. Like they had pheasants in it, uh, pooping in it for like 12 years to create a really fertile ground. And their, their earth, you can tell it's better. It's like darker. But I think this mat, just the heat that it attracts, caused these to just jump like it was crazy. Even even the guy that bought my seed from was like, wow, it's pretty pretty large for that. Yeah, my, my original plan was just to actually uh, lay the garlic in and get like a little Tillmore tractor and just tine weed it all the time. I'll spend a little more time in the fall to save myself time in the spring weeding, you know? So it's probably like fairly even trade off as far as like I'm still spending time going through here and weeding, obviously. Um, yeah, so it cost you six grand to... Yeah, to... yeah, I pretty much figured if uh, if I throw six grand on it and it doesn't work, at least I tried, and if it does, then maybe something I can move into in the future, because currently I work uh, in industrial manufacturing, and like, it's it's a good industry, and it pays well, but it's not where my soul is, you know? I've, there's probably a lot of people that feel the same way about their jobs, but yeah, I saw yeah. an opportunity here, and I was wondering, you miss 100% of the chances you don't take, right? So. Right. Might as well give it a shot. So right. actually next year I plan on expanding this to about two, three times the size in the back here. Okay. So I, I got about, so this is actually only about 0.7 of an acre, 0.6 of an acre. And back here, there's about two and a half or three but more. Behind the house or just like behind in the front? Shop, okay, yeah, behind here. the shop. Go back there. Yeah. So I got this prepped all the way to the back almost. There's a bit of a drop off at the back of the property. And then uh, essentially that fence over there next to the house that is where the property line is so i got to do a little more mowing to prep this and i'll probably start plowing this uh beginning of june here really quick when it dries out right and do you have a plow of some uh, sort? yeah so they're all uh 1940s tractors like, okay like yeah. a common modern farm you know right <laughs> and those are always the best because you can fix them without they're very easy to work computers on. yeah yeah <laughs> and being a machinist i just if i got a problem with the part half the time it's pretty easy to oh yeah yeah like 
And I forgot that you said that because uh, I said industrial manufacturer, but I'm actually my title is machinist. Okay, okay. So regardless whether you're you're if you're in that industry, even related to that industry, sometimes you can do a lot yourself, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, another reason why this has helped me a lot, because I don't really need to call mechanics for anything if something goes wrong. Yeah, yeah. And you got all the yeah random parts and metal. So the thing that yeah. worries me and that I heard about is sort of planting the garlic on the same, same spot yeah. than the, the, the following season. So is that something you thought about? I heard you could mitigate that with like putting down yeah. different soil or manure. Or... Yeah, if you, uh, if you try and, so the problem is garlic is prone to uh, root rot, nematodes, like things, disease and pests that get into the roots and, and they stay in the soil after it's harvested. It will be curious to see if it grows as well as, as it has kind of Honestly, this has been a major year. surprise to see it this big already. What we did is, I bought a water storage tank at auction, which ended up not being big enough, and that's why I got that bigger one over there that I'm still waiting set up on. Um, and I ran drip line, two, two lengths of drip line for each piece of mat. I got the main hose. essentially designed to zigzag the water back and forth so that dirt and sediment doesn't get in them so that your drain or your uh, irrigation doesn't get clogged up and uh, the water the plants continue to get water even if there's dirt in the line. And garlic is uh, the big uh, hutterate crop so the hutterates grow a ton of elephant garlic they got like silos full of it that's actually one of the main reasons I didn't plant any elephant garlic is because uh, we got a couple of friends in the hutterate colony and they pretty much brought us out there and been like, okay, look at like this 20 foot tall <laughs> yeah. silo full of like garlic, dried out garlic balls. And we're like, okay, so the Hutterate's got the market on this. Well, thanks for showing us this, this uh, garlic plot that you have going on here. And uh, we'll definitely be revisiting it to see uh, what, what happens. Guys, hope you enjoyed that. That was actually like usual with most of my videos most of my interviews it was kind of a last minute thing uh, nick was uh happy to jump on that and allow me to film his garlic and film him and actually him and i might partner up this year and and try to kind of combine our heads and our land and our garlic and maybe form a little bit of a little bit of a, a real side business when it comes to our garlic operations and so stay tuned for that in addition to of course many events uh things are starting to ramp up for the summer so it's gonna be a busy summer lots of footage and we'll see where this garlic thing goes to i'm really excited about that and uh take it easy we'll see you later never give up never surrender <laughs>